Senate candidate Granny D will be with us to talk about her documentary on HBO. Plus, tips on how to prepare healthy food choices this Thanksgiving. Also, the skinny on skin care now that the weather is turning colder. Well, with the holidays fast approaching, most of us are looking forward to spending time with family and friends. And while that's usually something to look forward to, it seems there are always some family members we want to avoid. In fact, some could even be called the relatives from hell. Ron Villano is a mental health counselor and advisor who has written on this subject, and he joins us live from New York with some advice on how to deal with these relatives from the dark side. Ron, we're so happy to see you. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> I have to tell you that at this time of year, this we, we all hope and pray that the holidays are going to go just fine with our family, but it really does cause more stress than shopping or the right gift selection or decorating or anything. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is I think most people and my own patients will say that they dread the holidays, and I think it's because they feel that they have to go and that they have to sit there and there's a pecking order in the family. So if you were the youngest, you're going to be treated like the youngest, even if you're 40 years old, Thanksgiving Day sitting at the table. And, you know, who wants to be 40, you know, who wants to be five when you're 40? And for some reason, you still can't be heard. And Uncle Harry, you know, and Aunt Mary is still running the show. Yeah, I know. I, I, why is it that parents have to treat their children like children, even when their children are 60? I think it validates parenthood. You know, it makes, <laughs> makes them feel like a parent, like, wow, all this money and time I put in? Guess what? It was worth it because I get to... Uh, you know, still be in control. Yeah. There, well, there's a word for it. If I, yeah, if I may use myself as an example, for 54 years I have gone home to my parents' house for Christmas. As they age, it's becoming more stressful. How do you say no without hurting well, them? For, well, first off, you give yourself permission to make choices. So I have a famous phrase, you know, that I have most people say right before they do anything. It's, I choose to. And when you're there, actually you chose to be there. And you chose not to hurt them, and you chose to be kind, and you chose to put in a certain amount of time. But everyone needs, when it comes to families, you need an exit plan. And an exit plan is a gentle thing, you know. So there's always a way to go from where you were and out. And how do you, how do you not hurt them? Is by actually sharing with them how much you love them. And then the other side of the note, you let them know that there's some things in your life that they need to understand and hear. Okay, well, assuming we have everybody there and it's going fairly well and we all sit down at the dinner table and it all starts to blow up on us, <laughs> how do we get through the arguments and the awkward moments? How do you get through them? Well, let's say this. What part are you taking in the argument? What is your need to be right? Or what is your need to make someone wrong so that you're right? And how long have you been doing that? So there, there becomes like a part of resentment. And how do we get through that is we can only control our own thoughts. We can only mm -hmm. control what we say. So sometimes we need to work on ourselves and say, this time when I go there, I'm not going to engage in the same button pushing that Uncle Joe is going to do to, on this holiday. So I'm going to act differently. And if I act differently, I can assure you that other members in your family are going to act differently and the conversations are going to change. Let's run through some quick bullet points. I think we have a graphic of this we can throw up on the uh -huh. screen as we do on, how to, on your best suggestions for how to deal with this. Oh, and they are I, to choose, I choose to, as you mentioned. Yes, I choose to, which I put in there because life is about choice. You can choose to be there or you can choose not to be there. Even though you feel compelled to be there, it's still your choice. And when you know it's your choice, you're gaining your full power back. And you know that you're there for a reason. And the reason you're there is to make someone happy. A lot of times it's not yourself, but it's somebody's getting happy. Some, <laughs> we ran through and we, and we talked about most of the other ones that were on the screen as well. You also say there are three major personality types that tend to suck the life out of everyone else. What, what, what are those? Yes, in, in my book, there's personalities that are called the dumpster. And I have the dumpster, the battery, and the light bulb. And the dumpster person is the person that always takes everything in. They're always willing to listen to your issues, do whatever you have to say, and they want to rescue you, help you, fix you. However, every time you ask them how they're doing, what do they say? Everything is fine. Everything is great. And we all know it isn't. And that person becomes that person that you just go there and you're just dumping stuff in, but it does become frustrating because they're never sharing their own inner feelings. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the battery, the battery is... Uh, is a personality where people allow others to attach their cables to. They allow them to attach their cables and connect to them and drain them. And in my book, in the Zing, the battery is a person that you would say is almost like a martyr. 
They're able to do everything while they're being drained. And the last and, one? And the last one is, I have to say, is the best one. It's the light bulb. And hopefully we all become light bulbs. That's the person that's non-judgmental, only wants to help you, and is always shining a light for you as your journey goes forward and teaching you and allowing you to understand that you can only live in the moment. And that's what you have now. And to have a person like that, I think, is beautiful. And if you can have someone like that at your holiday party, then that's what's going to help you. And in my book, there's plenty of tools on how to get from one end to the other this tunnel during the holidays well, and to come out looking good. Like moths to a flame, we'll all go to the light bulb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. We appreciate your advice, as always. Thank you. And happy holidays. You, too. And still to come on Daily Cafe, healthy solutions for your Thanksgiving meal. But first, tips from Expedia.com on how to find the cheapest airfare for the holiday season. We'll be right back.